yeah so we were in hebrews chapter 7 towards the end and we saw how the priesthood of jesus is so much greater than the priesthood of aaron and we saw the features of our priest as well who presents to us a new covenant he was appointed by god he is a high priest forever okay so we've understood that in every sense what we have now is so much greater than what used to be and imagine the people honored what god gave them and particularly the jews they were proud of the ceremonies that in fact you know, god gave them uh, all those practices of worship so that the fulfillment of those things would take place in the lord jesus and now that they have the lord jesus who is the fulfillment of everything they have known earlier uh, they were struggling to accept this jesus okay and they were struggling to let go of their uh, you know their the all their preferences isn't it so sad and uh, uh, so like unthinkable that though we have the greatness of god before us sometimes we get stuck in the old and that was the problem of the israelites as well okay, they were being taken to the promised land but as some people have put it they came out of egypt but, but egypt was in them and they wanted some fleshly comforts because of that they were ready to let go of god they were le- ready to let go of the worship of god if you remember uh, they built a calf to worship him worship it when moses came back from the mountain he was so upset just he had gone for a little while and these people you know, they wanted to worship the way other cultures worship so that flesh in us right we need to let it die we need to gain uh, an understanding of why is it you know that we are worshiping this god and hebrews is a book like that that gives us revelation and helps us understand you know what god has done for us is so much greater than what our flesh is you know asking us to hold on to so even for us different ones of us no matter uh, what traditions we come from or you know our way of life our uh, attitudes we may not fully recognize the greatness of god and his works but when we get revelation from god's word we begin to understand oh what i have now is way greater than you know whatever uh, i thought was good for me so let me worship the lord more let me serve the lord better let me offer up my life to god you know th- this book is meant to do that to us help us commit and submit ourselves in a greater way and that is the call that these jewish believers be, were being given come on surrender to this god because he is he gave you what was wonderful but now what you have in christ jesus is so much greater and you need to understand the value of it so coming back to the kind of high priest that the lord jesus is we saw that he can sympathize with our weaknesses uh, he became a human being uh, to be a high priest now add more things to that he is holy he is harmless all of this you know g- brings us honor for the kind of high priest that we have you know if our high priest is not honorable you know how do we go how do we approach this high priest right we will lose our confidence but we are told that he is holy and so we can look up we can honor this high priest who is serving us he is harmless 
many a times we are afraid when we go to somebody who uh, is more righteous than us that they might condemn us and say how could you do this or you know how could you not live a righteous life but we have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses and he is harmless he is not going to take our weakness and use it against us that's not the kind of high priest that we have he is holy he is harmless he is undefiled again he is not corrupted by the world if you go back to hebrews 4 that we saw that he was tempted in every way yet without sin that's the kind of person i think it's hebrews 2 yeah tempted in every way but he never really sin so he was not corrupted by the world so this shows us that he was an overcomer and that's a challenge for us we can live in this world and make lot of excuses and say oh it's very difficult the pressures are too many the sins i am are uh, tempted attracted to the things of the world i sin because i couldn't help it but the example of jesus is a challenge for us you see here that he was undefiled was he tempted yes but he never got corrupted by sin so we too can follow in his footsteps in continuation more features about this high priest separate from sinners and has become higher than the heavens who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices okay so the human high priests because they were they also had sin in them they have to cleanse themselves before they go and make offerings for others but jesus was holy he was undefiled and therefore he did not have to uh, do those rituals before he could come to the lord and so this high priest you know in in that sense uh, he is so perfect he is so perfect and he offered himself up it says he did once for all when he offered himself offered up himself so instead of these repeated sacrifices so you know it's like you can make a table where you can put the high priest under the order of Aaron or levi uh, the tribe of levites and then you can have another column there where you say uh, jesus uh, the high priest according to the order of melchizedek and then start making comparisons did the high priest end up sinning yes they did because they did not have that overcoming power yet we know that after the lord jesus died and uh, he rose again we are in another covenant altogether okay the kind of uh, forgiveness grace that we enjoy that's different from what the old testament high priest had and you know so you could sit and keep comparing they were sin they sinned jesus never sinned they had to make sacrifices for their own sins jesus did not because he was holy and undefiled were they harmful yeah sometimes they took the sins of the people and they uh, were not compassionate towards them but jesus is harmless okay so you could put all of these things up and these high priests often they had to make sacrifices but jesus once for all how did he make that sacrifice by dying on the cross for us so it's finished he does not have to repeatedly daily in other words keep making sacrifices for us so this high priest whom we have through an oath uh he has been appointed for us as a high priest and god has appointed the son who has been perfected for ever so we can put it in a simple way and say he is a perfect high priest okay jesus is a perfect high priest now let's continue to see further about this uh, high priest and the better covenant that you know we were earlier discussing
So we've understood that we have a, a special high priest. Where is this priest doing his ministry? He is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Every high priest will have his place of worship. We know that the tabernacle was the place that the other earthly high priests would go to earlier. And then later, you know, you had the temple where they would go and they would minister. But which is the headquarters or if you want to say the office of the Lord Jesus? Heaven. So his ministry is in heaven. And which is the chair? You know, everybody has a chair in the office. Okay, which is your position? Sit, sit in your place. Jesus' place is the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. That's where he sits and he does his ministry. He is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected and not man. So here is the uh, truth for us. The heaven where God dwells and where God is worshipped, 24 bar 7, the angels, the elders, the heavenly beings are crying out, holy, holy, holy. They are worshipping God. That is the true temple. Here, the word tabernacle is mentioned. It's the true tabernacle. On earth, you have pictures or you have shadows. You know, I am reminded, I have this, uh, this child, okay, my niece. Uh, and she has this uh, toy laptop. She's very excited about it. It's a pink colored laptop and you put the switch on, some music will, you know, you can play some music and it will give you those sounds when you press the keys as if you're typing, you get that and then you get uh, images of A, B, C, D. So sometimes she used to say, okay, I'm going to work on my laptop and she'll bring her laptop, open it, you know, one small, cute pink one. And I always used to look at it and think that's not a real laptop. Okay, uh, but you can't tell her that it's like a laptop. It's like a shadow of the real laptop. So she also used to say, I'm also working. I'm working on my laptop. So when you talk about the things that God erected, I'm giving a very crude example. But when you look at practices under the old covenant, they were shadows. It's not the real thing gives us some insight and understanding into the real truth that God wants to convey, but it's a shadow. And maybe one day, you know, when uh, my niece, she grows up and she's able to use a real laptop, she will understand, oh, wow, you can do so much on this real laptop. Uh, you can uh, research, you can have audio, video. So the capacity is you know so it, it is beyond what that small little tiny pink laptop can do so in the same way when you look at the real tabernacle the tabernacle which we had on the earth was limited it was a shadow there were some like you could look at the tabernacle, you could look at um, the things in the tabernacle and you could understand, oh, this is this is what God wants. God wants worship. Okay, this is how God wants to be worshipped. Things, everything should be holy. Uh, this is how God wants to be worshipped, you know. So you have an idea, but it's not the real thing yet. So the real temple is heaven. And in that place, in the real head office, Jesus is a minister of the sanctuary. And who, you know, sanctuary is another word we use for like the, the house of God, the house of worship. And who made that real sanctuary? 
on the earth we build isn't it we build oh, okay i'm going to build my church like this it will be it look like a hall or maybe you, you want it to look like some of those old traditional uh, churches with uh, with a steeple and a cross and you know all of that so man builds the physical structure here so even in the old covenant uh, old testament times people built the tabernacle the way god told them but heaven who built it the lord erected the real sanctuary and jesus is appointed there as our high priest forever he is holy he is harmless you know he uh, is is forever so you could look at his ministry and understand that this is the kind of person i have who will intercede on my behalf or who will you know do whatever is required by high priest for me and he has already done it as well through his sacrifice so what a privilege for us as god's people uh, verse 3 we are told every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices therefore it is necessary that this one also have something to offer so every uh, priest if we talk about their ministry they will keep you know doing something in the temple right the uh, we are familiar with that so even jesus needs to be doing something some offer offerings and sacrifices because if he were on earth it would be required of him of the law those who were uh, here on the earth uh, they did those things but you know the lord jesus we'll see later a little later in these passages what is the kind of ministry what has he done for us by becoming a high priest we will look at it but we are quite clear that the tabernacle or the temple which was made by man on the earth it was made according to the pattern you know verse 5 it says uh, god gave moses divinely moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle for he said see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain so god gave the pattern to moses and that's how he made it so now let's come back to the excellent ministry we are told in verse 6 of hebrews more excellent in fact ministry of the lord jesus why why is it a more excellent ministry because he has become a mediator of a better covenant so when you look at the priests here on the earth they are doing sacrifices and offerings but we saw earlier that once for all he has already uh, made that sacrifice but his role right now is that of a mediator of a better covenant and that is the excellent more excellent ministry which our high priest forever according to the order of melchizedek that is the lord jesus has received now and this covenant is also established on better promises so you know whenever you have something better why should you use the older one you know, we have uh, phones i remember back when i was in college you had those nokia Uh, i think 1100 phone or something like which was just basic you know, basic you could just make a call with it and send some text messages and we were so excited when we got those days when those phones came out and they were affordable everyone was excited everyone had a phone uh, but as days went by you, know, you recognize hey you can have an android phone it has be- more features you could do other things with it right it's not just for you to make a call but these days you know we we've gone many versions higher and technology not just for a phone but so many other gadgets it's 
just getting better and better and better. Now you tell me, if there was uh, an iPhone, you know, today's model and a Nokia phone that I was talking about earlier, which can only ba barely make a call, kept before you, which one would you pick? You would pick something which is way better, isn't it? So in the same manner, we understand that the Lord Jesus, oh, what is, whenever you think of this high priest, we think about more excellent ministry. He is the mediator of a better covenant. It is established on better promises. So the believer is being told, you have great hope, believer, and you have no excuse to go back to your old ways of life. You have no excuse to go back to your old traditions, particularly the Jewish believer. He's being told or she is being told that if you go back and if again, if you go back to your temple practices, how would it make sense? Because Jesus has already paid the price once for all. It's no longer required the daily sacrifices that the priests used to make. You know, all of those things, it's redundant. Or it's no longer applicable. You have a better covenant through the mediator. Who? What is a mediator? You know, mediator is somebody, uh, that word mediator from the Greek is uh, mesitis. It means one who stands in the middle between two people and brings them together. So if you have, let's say, two groups are fighting, a mediator comes, he patches them up and says, okay, come on, let's work together. That's a mediator. So for the old covenant, which is, a, 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 you know, a, you could say a, a, an inferior, it's okay to use that word, inferior covenant. You had Moses, who is the mediator. So he was the mediator between God and the people. And he introduced that old covenant that God gave. And people could see the goodness of God through that old covenant itself. But now you have Jesus. Who is there? Right? Okay, God, the people, and the Lord Jesus, who has become our mediator of a better covenant with better promises. And so the Jewish believers, uh, if anyone, you know, I told you, right, the situations that they were going through. So in a sense, you know, if things got really hard, they could have said, okay, you know, forget about Jesus and all because, <laughs> excuse me, we are really struggling. Uh, and we don't have the kind of life that we used to have. So I'm not going to fully leave the faith, but, you know, I'll just go back to practicing my traditions. In a very subtle way, it could have kept them happy because uh, the Jewish practices talked about the Lord Jesus, isn't it? So they could have deceived themselves in a way and settled with the old uh, covenant and an old, uh, you know, like an inferior covenant. But we are being encouraged and particularly the Jewish believers of that day were being encouraged and told, when you have something better, how could you? How could you pick something, you know, that was just a shadow? So please don't go back to the worldly ways or the, the traditional practices, your customs, uh, and be satisfied with that. When you have the real deal before you and Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. Now, he also uh, tries to tell these believers, you know, some of them might have had a doubt in their hearts and said, no, that was good. That was really good. Whatever we did, the way we worshipped God, it was really good. So they are being reminded in verse 7, they're being told, for if that first covenant had been faultless, 
So let's say, you know, what was the uh, covenant uh, that Moses gave? No, it was a covenant which was based on law. So if man was able to keep the law, fulfill the law and walk blameless and walk righteous and all of it, why would there be a need for another covenant? But there was a problem with the old covenant. Though, you know, we also see this in the in the book of Romans, though the, the uh, covenant and the commandments which Moses gave were able to bring the understanding of sin to us. What is right? What is wrong? There was no empowering. There was no... Uh, you know, that, that strength that each human being had to keep the law and fulfill the law. So they were constantly breaking the promises. And when you break the promise, what should you do? You have to make atonement. That's where they went to the temple. That's where they gave a sacrifice. You know, that's where they asked for God's forgiveness. So that's how they lived. The law will tell you right and wrong. If you break anything, go ask for forgiveness. But that's not complete. And that's that's not the way God wanted it to be. And they are being reminded, look, if that old covenant was faultless, then why should you have a new one? You know, whenever God does something new, particularly, you know, when it comes to these covenants and all that, he establishes a new one. It means that the old one was inferior. Okay, so even when we do uh, our uh, interpretation, when you do your hermeneutics, when you want to know, there is a practice in the Old Testament. Is that a good practice, a bad practice? Uh, should we still continue it or not? Then what we do is you come back to the New Testament, look at the cross and see after the cross what has changed. If something given in the New Testament says, okay, change it. For example, here you have all these temple practices. It's over. It's part of the old covenant. You don't have to do it. Because Jesus, once and for all, he has paid the price for us. And so it stops. But if there are certain things, for example, in the Old Testament we saw Melchizedek, you know, in Genesis, Abraham gave him a tithe. It's repeated here in the New Testament. So if the question comes, is tithe okay? Should we tithe as the believers of today? Yes, because God did not close that chapter and say, don't tithe. You get it? So that's how we interpret. If there's something that God says, okay, close it. If you remember the uh, vision that Peter had, in uh, Acts 10, where he sees this whole scroll, uh, or sorry, a tent come down with all the animals, the unclean animals, the clean animals. So when you see things like that, you know, oh, okay, it's about the food laws, which were given during the times of Moses, which changed in the new covenant. So look for the changes that God makes in the new covenant. Testament. And here very clearly, old covenant, we are done with it. Moses and the law, not that it was removed, because we know that Jesus said, I fulfill the law, but the grace aspect came in through the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's how we understand it. So if the old one was perfect, there would be no need to change it okay let me quickly pause for a moment you know i'm going on and on i hope uh, you're getting it and i hope uh, you know it's making sense to you so uh, yeah I is this okay are you understanding is it getting too heavy please let me know Okay, so Aren says, okay, Dave says, okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, Kiran also, okay, so that way at least I know that you all are listening to me because I can't hear any of your voices. Okay, good, you're there and you are 
connected okay we will uh, go further from here so we are at verse 8 now okay yeah so we yeah so we once again see in the next uh, passage here the promise of god um, i'm not going to read the whole thing for you but basically he's saying that you know the days are coming uh, when i'm going to make a better covenant with the house of israel and the house of judah okay and this will be uh, a new one it will not be according to the covenant which your fathers uh, had in the day when you know god led them out of egypt but he's saying that uh, he will make a new covenant and then you know we also see that god speaks to the people and says i will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts now if you look at the old covenant if you look at the uh, laws which moses gave you know, those were written out for the people and we know that even the commandments they were written out on the tablets or stone but we also recognize that you know there is a work of the holy spirit which is available to believers after the cross and so what does god say he says look this law or right and wrong right the the um according to the nature of god all of this will not just be an external thing but even in our own hearts god says i will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts so that is something special for us as believers you know uh, uh, through the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ and god says look i will be their god and they shall be my people none of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother saying know the lord for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them for i will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds i will remember no more so you know you see a more personal approach and you also see the grace of god which has come upon the people through the new covenant because who is the mediator of this new covenant it is the lord jesus christ and through his sacrifice what has happened now we can live a victorious life okay we can live a life where we can constantly walk with god we can receive you know his mercy we can receive his forgiveness so overall you know if you ask me okay what do i take back from what you're teaching ma'am it's too much melchizedek and better covenant and mediator one key aspect is as believers we can be overcomers we can live a victorious life okay so that is something that i wish we can take back with us we are not like those old covenant believers okay who had to really struggle to live a life of righteousness if they failed they had to go make sacrifice you know you can imagine it would have been so hard for them but now we are being told the spirit of god lives inside you the law of god is written in our hearts okay and you know, also that god says he will be merciful to our unrighteousness and our sins their sins and their lawless deeds i will remember no more so this kind of forgiveness is being extended to us and we have the ministry of the holy spirit with us where we read here none of them shall teach their his neighbor obviously when we interpret that we don't mean that teaching is not required i can be on my own as a believer because it says here nobody will teach you know his neighbor 
because we see other passages of scripture where teachers are there in the in the word of god and we are supposed to teach one another so what does this mean it simply means that we all have the holy spirit to guide us that even if there is nobody to tell us we still have the holy spirit bearing witness with our spirit that you know this is right that is wrong we belong to god and you know so on and so forth so we are in a better position as believers today and we can overcome the devil we can be victorious in our walk here on earth and that is what all this you know, understanding the new covenant should help us do verse 13 it says in that he says a new covenant he has made the first obsolete now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away obsolete means again you know it's saying old it has become old the first one is old so it's ready to vanish away so pick up the new like the example that i gave you if there is something that is new and improved you would rather have that so let us hold on to this new covenant but let's quickly you know make a distinction between the two covenants so that we have better understanding so when was the old covenant given it was given around you know 1400 uh, uh, bc and when was the new covenant given obviously through the sacrifice of jesus so we could trace it back to around 33 ad okay. now what else we'll just see some comparison here the old covenant it was given to moses on mount sinai and we will read later that the new covenant is established for us at mount zion okay so that's the difference so the old covenant mount sinai the new covenant mount zion the old covenant even okay, you talk about it what comes to your mind you know there's this sense of fear and awe and dread uh, that even when the people thought of moses going and speaking to god they did not understand god for who he was and they had this fear and they would say no no moses you go we are not going okay so the covenant for them came in that way but today for us when we think of the new covenant you know we know that god has made himself accessible remember hebrews 4 that we can go to the throne of god boldly come boldly before the throne of god so the access of the old covenant and the new covenant you know we there is a difference the new covenant is inviting us when you think about the new covenant you know that there is uh, that thought that god is inviting us to receive from him the old covenant has a mediator that would be moses but the new covenant has a mediator which is the lord jesus christ now i just want to make a clarification here earlier there was a mention that uh, when we talked about the law given to moses through angels if you recall uh, we said it came to him through the the law came through the angel and i explained to you because of the commentaries that i saw uh, i explained to you that it seems like god there was probably an angel you know who uh, had an assignment of doing something you know with regard to the law and it was given to moses in that way but i correct myself the word angelos in the greek is messenger okay messenger so it is likely that even when the old covenant was, was given to moses who is he he is a messenger if you go to the book of revelation you know the angel of each church 
so obviously churches don't have every church does not have an angel that's how we will interpret it but who is the angel of the church the messenger the one who brings the message or the pastor so in the same way we can look at moses and understand that okay it's just referring to a messenger who brought the old covenant to us so it came through moses and moses was the mediator of the old covenant and for us today you know the lord jesus is the mediator of the new covenant the old covenant i told us people had to work hard they had to live right so it's a covenant of works but what about the new covenant it is something that has been given to us by grace and we don't have we don't need works to receive it because jesus has already paid the price for us but of course you no know, we have to work out our salvation in fear and trembling which means we have to live a righteous life before the lord but to get it or obtain it we don't have to work we simply put our faith in the work that the lord jesus has done then the old covenant for every covenant I, I think you would have studied in your other courses blood covenant. There is a need for the shedding of blood for a covenant to be made. The blood of animals was used for the old covenant, but whose blood was used for the new covenant? The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was applied for His to His people. So. that is the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant in the old covenant you had the priesthood of the law of moses through the descendants of aaron but in the new covenant we have the priesthood of all believers okay and we will understand that the priesthood of all believers and this is happening because of the high priest that we have according to the order of melchizedek now the old covenant required many sacrifices daily sacrifices even but the new covenant it has already been perfected because of one sacrifice of the son of god himself the old covenant was written on tablets of stone but the new covenant has been written on our hearts the old covenant had the goal of you know keep away from sin if you sin then you know you have to you will be condemned and you have to make the sacrifices and all of that but the new covenant it has these goals of receiving god's love his grace his mercy uh, and for us to walk with repentance for us to experience that remission of sin and also you know receive god's uh, rewards uh, especially the eternal reward of eternal life the old covenant it sort of brought a very challenging life okay because of the way you had to fulfill the law but when you look at the new covenant there's so much freedom we experience a lot of freedom because of the grace and mercy of god that we enjoy the old covenant people were not empowered by the holy spirit to keep the laws but in the new covenant we have the holy spirit working together with us so that we can live a victorious life so you know there are lots of such differences uh, that you know we see here but the point again that i want to make is that from these passages we understand that the believer today is greatly empowered the believer today um has 
the ability to walk a holy life and a fruitful life now if one does not want to live like that it's up to them but as you read about the ministry of jesus as a high priest and the new covenant that we have been given there's really no excuse okay and we can receive from what the lord jesus has done and we can live a life that glorifies god and that really uh, is the encouragement which we have and we must hold on to it and we must trust god that yes you know as a believer and uh, particularly if you're called into the ministry i can live a holy life i can live a fruitful life you know i can live an overcoming life because uh, i have the new covenant jesus is the mediator of the new covenant and we have understood about his priesthood so far and as we proceed further uh, in chapter 9 we will also see how the lord jesus has become that perfect sacrifice for us okay uh, he has become that atonement price for us so the more you delve deeper we are being encouraged look ahead look forward don't ever think of going back because what you have right now is so much better and it will strengthen you to fulfill the race that god has for us so i'm just going to pause at this point and uh, uh ask us any thoughts or any anything that comes to your mind if you want to comment then uh, you could talk about it and then we'll close soon after with a word of prayer okay so uh no no problem you could uh, continue to think and meditate on these things for some of us uh this might be a little difficult to understand because we may not have spent a lot of time in the tabernacle and you know uh the practices of the temple and all but you could study it so if you study that you get an idea Okay, and based on that, you could build further and understand uh, what the he book of Hebrews is talking about. Okay, so yeah, maybe some more time to study will be very very helpful for us. So let's close with a word of prayer. I request uh, anybody in the class to please go ahead and lead in prayer. Yeah, sure. Lord, we give all glory and our honor to you for being with us. Yeah. Go ahead, Kiran. Father, we come before your throne. Father God, we want to just say thank you, give Father God the subject, Father God, thank you, give for the high praise and mediator, Father God. Today we just receive your words, Father God, and revelation and understanding, Father God. Thank you, give for all things, Father God. Thank you, thank you, Father God. Help us to move forward, Father God. Thank you, give Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kiran. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. This week, I'll post your assignments so you can start working on it. Okay. So, God bless. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Day. Okay. Thank you. Bye.